It's a pleasure to be here for the first time as a speaker to give an Ignite talk about uh, humanitarians in the sky, um, the view from above, basically, the, 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 the way that we can try and get a, a better understanding of situational awareness during disasters. And we've been using satellite imagery for almost two decades as a community, but satellites do come with some challenges in terms of cost, uh, the time it takes to acquire the imagery, as well as data sharing restrictions. So I'm, I'm interested in the potential of UAVs as a way to augment satellite imagery, uh, not replace satellite imagery, but augment imagery. And it's interesting to see that OCHA, uh, amongst others, are taking little steps, but steps nevertheless, to experiment with small personal UAVs. The focus of this conference is local communities, and I want to talk about that. So IOM has been training a local team of Haitians in uh, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, to basically deploy their own UAVs autonomously on their own. And that's in, thanks to the incredible leadership of IOM Haiti. So there's empowerment at the community level to do disaster preparedness and response. On the other side of the planet, Sky Eye in the Philippines have been doing just the same thing, building local community uh, empowerment capacity to use these UAVs to, because these local communities are the first responders, they'll be the first to deploy uh, as well. And the resulting data does not get stuck somewhere in some hard disk. It gets printed out on local banners, rollable, waterproof banners that go right back into the community for participatory GIS, community mapping, and so on. There is that feedback loop. And the technology is becoming cheaper as well. My colleague Andrew from Code for America has hacked together a $60 uh, fixed wing uh, with a flight time of about an hour. And that opens up all kinds of opportunities, right? And according to Andrew, this is cheaper than balloon mapping. So there's this democratization potential of this new technology. So I share Kato Nj's uh, feelings and, and OSM's feelings about the, the important empowerment possibilities of UAVs at the community level. At the same time, we've seen this also in other technologies, mobile technology and so on. And we know that with mobile technology, it would be very dangerous. There are data privacy issues. There are some huge issues with UAVs as well ginormous issues, really complex problematic issues, and that's the whole point behind the humanitarian UAV network, is to address these issues head on, not wait, but take a step forward now to try and manage some of these issues as best as possible. We focus on policy, we focus on coordination as well. We have drafted the first and only code of conduct for the use of UAVs in humanitarian settings. We're providing next year the first ever specialized course on the use of UAVs in humanitarian settings. And we're also involved in operational deployments. So next year, we'll be in Nepal working with the OSM community there, helping to do exactly what IOM did in Haiti, build a local community of UAV experts, uh, Nepalese themselves taking care of these technologies. And we do this thanks to our uh, awesome advisory board, who are from a whole host of different organizations and sectors, and the network itself, uh, self-organized around eight different thematic teams. I believe you'll find those somewhat self-evident and explanatory. You can f uh, find out more at uaviators.org. The network itself is comprised of about 700 members in 70 different countries around the world. And thanks to our partnership, official partnership with AirVid, we have direct access to over 500 professional vetted UAV pilots in more than 50 different countries around the world. We also have a crisis map, crowdsourced crisis map, of aerial videos and photos of disaster areas taken by UAV experts as well as members of the public. And we're using this map to further expose members of the public to our code of conduct, the do's and don'ts. We want to make the public part of the solution, not part of the problem. Our rock star colleagues at OpenStreetMap have been doing some phenomenal work with aerial imagery in, in recent year. Uh, they did f great work in, in Takloban after Typhoon Haiyan, tracing aerial imagery. We're experimenting with micro mappers as well in collaboration with UNOCHA, where we're trying to see if we can crowdsource feature detection and combine that with machine learning in order to make sense of this new source of big data. Now, data collection is not the only use case for UAVs. There are other use cases as well. 3G, 4G coverage, providing Wi-Fi coverage, doing transportation of small payloads and so on. These are our early days, but folks, these are multi-billion dollar companies who are investing time in R&D into these particular use cases. So UAVs are not going away. More on that and on humanitarian technology and specifically crisis mapping in my forthcoming book, digital-humanitarians.com. And you can also find me online at irevolution.net. Thank you very much.